Now let's get this party started. Put your hands together for one of Southeast Asia's biggest entrepreneurs, co-founder and group CEO of Catch a Group, Patrick Grove. <laughs> Morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, okay. Wow, this is such a freaking cool scene. So usually when we go to a tech event, if it's very easy to determine who has money and who's looking for money, right? So people with money are wearing jackets like these two gentlemen in the front. So let's everyone wearing a jacket, put up your hand. Don't be shy. Don't worry, you'll find the next unicorn today. So everyone a jacket. You can see them around. Everyone not wearing a jacket, so everyone wearing your, the name of your company on your T-shirt is looking for money. <laughs> because we wear free merchandise from the office, and that's why we're fundraising. But where I get confusing in Indonesia is that a lot of people are wearing batik shirts. So I'm not sure whether batik means you have money or you're looking for money. So, so maybe, maybe it means both. So anyway, anyway, welcome, everyone. Um, I want to start off by thanking... Wild Digital is put together by an amazing all-female team who are based in Malaysia and flew in to put this together, led by Steph. And my mom always told me, if you want a good job done, you give it to a man. If you want an amazing job done, you give it to a woman. There's a woman right in the front, like, giving me, like, a high five. So big round of applause to Steph and everyone. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna, what I'm going to do today is, you know, the tech scene in Southeast Asia is exploding but it's, it's exploding in Indonesia even more. So I want to share with you some predictions that we put together. Some of you would have seen these before, um, but I think they really, really apply to this market because this market is absolutely fascinating. <clears throat> this stat is incredible because around sometime this morning, Southeast Asia passed 400 million internet users, 400 million. The reason why this number is absolutely mind-blowing is that all of America only has about 220 million internet users. All of Europe only has about 210 million users. So Southeast Asia today already has more users in America, more users in Europe, and in about three to five months from now, we'll have more users in America and Europe added up together. So why this is important is that you start to realize that we live in a market where the internet companies that are being built in this part of the world can become bigger than the companies in America, then become bigger than the companies in Europe. And what's interesting is that Indonesia probably has around 150, 160 million engineers. So Indonesia alone gets to a place in the next 12 to 18 months where Indonesia has more internet users than all of the United States, has more internet users than all of Europe. And, and that is an, an absolutely mind-blowing statistic, because if you're someone in a suit with money to spend and money to invest, then this is the right country to spend. <clears throat> we made this prediction early earlier this year that because the user numbers were exploding in Southeast Asia, and what happens is that when user numbers explode, capital comes in, that at some point, one of the companies in Southeast Asia would eventually become a decacorn. It's not even a unicorn, a decacorn, which is a company worth 10 billion US. And when we made this prediction in January this year, I think between Grab and Gojek, either of them is either already a decacorn or will be a de decacorn on their next round of funding. And what you're seeing is that, I mean, not only are they great entrepreneurs building great companies, but this huge surge in population that are connecting to the internet every day is just fueling a rise, so that almost every internet company is being lifted by this tide. Later on, we're going to hear from my friend at Tokopedia uh, how they have built an amazing unicorn, and, and with a bit of luck, hopefully you guys will be the next decacorn as well. <clears throat> What's very interesting about the Southeast Asian internet system is because we're sometimes a little bit behind other parts of the world, when you think about having a crystal ball to look at, China is exactly that crystal ball. You can look exactly what happened in China and see that it's going to happen in Indonesia and Southeast Asia in the next several years. So what's interesting is that the amount of internet users that we'll have this year or early next year is very, very similar to the number of internet users that China had in 2010. And what's more interesting is that if you look at the total valuation of all of the top internet companies in China at that point in time, 
it was about $95 billion. If you do the same in South Asia and you add up the valuation of, say, the top 50 internet companies in Southeast Asia, you also get to about 90 billion US dollars. So what you start to realize is that valuations are directly related to population. And as population grows, so do valuations. <clears throat> we made this prediction. It hasn't happened yet, but I'm super excited because I'm pretty convinced that someone in this room is very likely going to be part of a company or start a company or fund a company that will become a unicorn in about three years. And when you look at how fast companies are growing in Southeast Asia and how fast users are going online and using their phones, then you see how quickly these companies can be built. When you go back to some of the companies that were built in the pre-smartphone era, whether it's Job Street or iProperty, <clears throat> these are companies that required on either a desktop or a laptop. So you couldn't, you couldn't be sitting here using the internet while I was presenting. You would have to go back to your office or go back to your home. But today, while I'm sitting here, you're probably booking a flight ticket, you're messaging friends, you're uploading videos to Instagram, you're watching something on iFlix, you're buying a mobile phone charger on Tokopedia. You can do all of that while you're sitting in this room. And as a result, companies get built faster because you use the internet a lot more. So when you, when you, when you look at this chart and you start to extrapolate this out, what that means is that at some point in the next couple of years, someone in Southeast Asia and very likely someone in Indonesia and very likely someone that someone in this room knows will build a unicorn in anywhere from two to three years. So that, that's, that's absolutely mind blowing that we're probably so close to being part of something absolutely amazing. <clears throat> what you see interesting, and back to the slide earlier, when you start to realize that we're very similar to China several years ago, then you start to appreciate why Chinese companies are the biggest investors in Southeast Asia because what they're seeing in this part of the world is something that they already saw in China over the last several years. So you think about companies like Alibaba, Tencent, um, Baidu, JD, and so on and so forth. The amount of money that they're pouring into the region, it might, it might seem huge to read that company ABC raises $200 million, but when you think about where that money comes from, that money comes from a company in China that's worth $500 billion. I mean, these are really, really small amounts of money for these guys to put money into something that they've already seen. They've already seen this story before uh, and absolutely confident that whatever happened in China happens in Southeast Asia. <clears throat> this was an interesting prediction that there's been this huge wave and in interest in Bitcoin and blockchain and cryptocurrencies that we made this prediction that one country in Southeast Asia would announce that virtual currency would be legal, legal tender. And this was a pretty out there prediction. You know, it was really interesting. Um, okay, before I show that, let's quickly do a quick poll on Slido. I want to quickly see <clears throat> how many of you have invested in cryptocurrency in the last 24 months. How many are trading cryptocurrency as I'm presenting, like live from the room right now? Pretty interesting. So, so what that means is that if 30% of people in this room have invested in cryptocurrency, if you haven't invested in cryptocurrency, that means either the person on your left or the person on your right has invested in cryptocurrency. So, so take a good look. So you're sitting next to someone who's a cryptocurrency investor. Um, so what's really interesting is although cryptocurrency prices are down dramatically in the last 12 months, Thailand announced last month that they're going to use blockchain to completely re-energize and systemize the Thai bot. So they actually will be one of the first countries in the world to issue a digital currency. <clears throat> okay, Indonesia. So we spent a bit of time at the team thinking about what are some predictions that we make about Indonesia? Like, you know, we've, we've, we've been in this market for a long time. I actually used to go to high school in this country as a kid. And, you know, what are some Indonesia-specific predictions that we can make? So number one prediction for us is that funding in Indonesia will exceed funding in Singapore in the next, probably the next 12 months. So what you're seeing is if you look back, when you see a lot of big funding announcements in South Asia, they very often come from Singapore companies or they come from Indonesian companies that made the announcement in Singapore. 
And I think what you'll start to see more and more is that Indonesian only specific registered companies making more and more announcements such that funding and availability of funding in Indonesia will actually be bigger in Singapore. And this is a huge step because Singapore prides itself as being a finance hub of Southeast Asia. But back to my point earlier, because the population here is so big and investors you know, anyone with a, with a suit or jacket can get on a plane and come to Indonesia and meet an entrepreneur. The funding can be closed here and it can be announced out of Indonesia. So I think what you're going to start to see is that the amount of money being raised out of Indonesia will overtake the amount of money being raised or sourced out of Singapore. <clears throat> All right, last poll in my presentation. If you had 10 million to invest, what industry would you invest in? Would it be fintech? Would it be e-commerce? Would it be classifieds? Would it be sports? Would it be media? Like. Would it be crypto? Would it be marijuana? Would it be... <clears throat> Interesting. I like how ride hailing is at the bottom. I, I think those two guys have enough money, right? They don't need any more money. So. <laughs> Incredible. Healthcare and fintech are the top two. So anyway, if you're an entrepreneur in any of those categories, this is the right place to be today. Um, <clears throat> so for us, prediction number two is that there'll probably be two unicorns coming out of Indonesia in fintech and health, health tech. And what you see, those are the areas that, that haven't created any big companies in Southeast Asia yet. But if you went to China, there's already unicorns in those categories. So back to my point earlier, that those Chinese unicorns are probably going to look for people in Southeast Asia building fintech or health tech startups that they can back and grow and mold into becoming the next unicorns. And what was interesting, we did a survey at another event where we asked people, what are the, what are the two areas that you're most interested in? And, and interesting, it's, it's fintech and healthcare that we're seeing consistently being areas that investors are are getting more and more interested in. All right, last prediction. Indonesia will have the largest share of Nexicorn. So I actually only learned this word a week ago. Nexicorn is, I guess, the next unicorn. So it's a company worth 100 million US and above. Um, <clears throat> what's interesting is that if you look at the data, this was showing uh, how many Nexicorns were in Indonesia in 2016. It's a little bit old, but, but there were seven Nexicorns in Indonesia, only one in Philippines, two in Thailand, three in Malaysia, 12 in Singapore. And back to my point earlier, like, you know, the size of the company follows the size of the population. So the bigger the population, the very likely the bigger the company. So if you, if you, if you continue to extrapolate the success of Indonesia, you'll find that Indonesia will develop more and more Nexicorns in the next 12 months, and hopefully one of them will become unicorns and Nexicorns and so on and so forth. So anyway, that's the end of my presentation. So I want to say to everybody, happy unicorn hunting in the next several hours, and I'll see you guys around. Thank you so much. Thanks.